to round out our discussion of strokes, um, the ophthalmic artery stroke is sometimes called CRAO, that's central retinal artery occlusion. Um, question stems will generally include something about a, a carotid bruit, uh, and potentially uh, the fundoscopic exam will say a cherry red spot. Uh, this is not the only condition that presents with cherry red spots. However, if you're thinking of a stroke, monocular vision loss, cherry red spot on the fundus exam along with carotid bruit, think uh, of something like central retinal artery occlusion. Anterior choroidal we didn't really discuss because it's the, basically the same thing as the lacunar syndromes uh, because this also feeds the deeper structures of the brain on the medial aspect. Superior cerebellar would just cause some hemiataxia. It's not really um, super common. Uh, of an artery to be um, infarcted generally. Pontine we discussed in the previous video. And then the uh, basilar and vertebral, uh, these are going to be generally very debilitating strokes. So things you'll look for are coma, possibly death, um, syncope. Um, if the uh, basilar artery is entirely knocked out, uh, you could get something like a locked in syndrome. Uh, if it was, uh, you know, in this general area, knocking out every single pontine vessel. Um, the vertebral artery, important notes here, will be that it's very commonly dissected. Uh, so vertebral artery dissection, uh, along with internal carotid dissections, is pretty common. Uh, uh, and then the final thing is in trauma, the vertebral arteries can be transected. And this is because of the lateral foramina uh, of the vertebrae where the vertebral artery courses before it makes some pretty complicated bends uh, to get into the posterior circulation. This leaves us with ica, pica, and the anterior spinal artery, and we're going to discuss these in the final little anatomy review over here. So first, we have to remember that we have already covered the cerebral strokes, we have already covered the basal ganglia or lacunar strokes, we've already covered the midbrain strokes, we've covered to some extent the pontine strokes. So now uh, as we keep going uh, further rostrally, we're going to reach the medulla. And so let's uh, draw the rostral medulla. It's a little bit like a butterfly, all right? Not the best drawing, but you get the picture. Um, Technically, this is one of the pontine cranial nerves, but laterally, we're going to draw cranial nerve eight. Uh, this is basically the junction of the pons and uh, medulla, shall we say. So cranial nerve eight is right here. The most medial aspect will have the MLF again. Um, the most uh, medial cranial nerve will be cranial nerve 12. And then sort of in the same, um, roughly the same pathway, shall we say you're going to have your, this is the medial lemniscus, which is going to be proprioception. And we're also going to have our corticospinal or pyramidal tracts here. Now, if this is 12, uh, a little bit laterally to that, we're going to have cranial nerve 10. Okay, so this is cranial nerve 10. Uh, and we're also going to draw the spinal thalamic tract right about here. It's going to be the spinal thalamic tract. And then there's the inferior olivary nucleus here. Uh, this is not the most detailed diagram, as you can see, but these are all the structures that are worth knowing about for these stroke syndromes. So first, we're going to have the lateral pontine syndrome, and this is uh, called Marie Foix syndrome. Next, we're going to have the lateral medullary syndrome also called Wallenberg. And then finally, we're going to have the medial medullary syndrome. So lateral pontine should sort of remind us that there's going to be some involvement of cranial nerve eight. And potentially, if this infarct is big enough, you're generally going to have some eight involvement uh, a palsy, basically, uh, along with because now we're in the cerebellar arteries, there's going to be some ataxia potentially. Uh, and so a palsy will also give us some vertigo uh, or hearing loss. Um, and then we could potentially get some sensory losses from the spinothalamic tract. So this would be sensory deficit, along with 
if it comes all the way down to the corticospinal, there could be some motor deficits. However, this is not the most common uh, symptom for Marie Foy. Wallenberg is the interesting one. Um, the telltale giveaway here is going to be cranial nerve 10 palsy, which presents as hoarseness and dysphagia. Along with this, you're also going to have some ataxia because it is, again, a cerebellar artery. This is going to be your, um, so this is your ICA stroke. This is your PICA stroke. All right. And then along with the 10 dysphagia, so that's stroke right here, 10 dysphagia hoarseness, you can also see that there's going to be some spinothalamic uh, knockout here, which will potentially cause facial pain. Uh, of the ipsilateral side, and then um, pain and temperature loss on the contralateral body. And this is because of the spinal trigeminal uh, nucleus, along with the spinothalamic tract, which are two different structures. Lastly, for the medial medullary syndrome, that's a stroke right here. And this is a very neat stroke that basically is due to the anterior spinal artery, before it has reached the spinal cord itself. And so your medial lemniscus is knocked out, therefore proprioception is lost in half of the body. Also, your corticospinal is knocked out, therefore you have hemiparesis. And then lastly, cranial nerve 12 is knocked out, therefore you'll have ipsilateral tongue paralysis. And with this, all the stroke syndromes have been completed and reviewed.